Well, hello, everybody. It's Dr. Paul Feuerstein, Editor-in-Chief of Dentistry Today. And usually you'll see me here sitting and talking about the technologies and your practices, but we're going down a side street today. I'm going to talk to you about our relationship with the insurance industry and insurance companies. And don't roll your eyes. I'm here to show you that they are your partner, they are your friend, they're going to help you be busy in your practices. And to help me with all this, I've invited Dr. Nina Prabhu to talk with us. So Nina, how are you today? Good. Uh, glad to be here. And, and so you have an interesting story. So tell us a little, a little about your years in dental practice and then why you said, I'm, you know, I'm going to get involved with the insurance industry. Um, so I was in dental practice. I actually graduated from uh, dental school in India and then came to the U.S., went to University of Pennsylvania, got my DMD. And then I was in practice uh, for a little over 10 years. And then the children came along, life happens. And um, I did want to stay a very engaged stay at home mom, but I also wanted to stay in my practice and you can't have your cake and eat it too, I've noticed in life sometimes. So there was a path that opened for me that was on the dental insurance side. Uh, at the time I was there, uh, living very close to Delta Dental of California and that's where that path took me. Uh -huh. I thought it was going to be a short journey and that's 20 years later now. <laughs> so it was not a short journey. I have enjoyed every minute of being on the other side of dental practice, but being a partner, I, what I've enjoyed most is working with dentists, helping them in getting their claims processed, helping them understand what that insurance industry is on the other side. It's not all a dark hole, uh, oh. pretty good. And it, oh. it's, it's normal uh, dentists <laughs> like you and me that are just working on a different career path. So yeah, and, and we've and we've talked we've talked briefly before, and, and your passion is amazing. It's just you're so ex, it's, you exude confidence and you exude happiness. And so this is what the insurance companies should be telling us all the time. So let's let's go back a couple of years and talk a little bit about what happened to our practices. There was the pandemic, and things got goofy to say the least. And and practices had to shut down. So so what what did you see going on? You were at the insurance point there. So how did this all put up? What, what did you see? <laughs> there was, there was uh, first of all, there was a shock to the system. The dental industry as, as a whole had a shock to the system. Uh, we had a shock to the system from the provider side because all of a sudden everything shut down. Um, you were barely doing emergencies even. Uh, there was... You know, the personal protective equipment, PPE was not there. And all, you know, there was a lot of changes that happened in the dental practice. But if you look at the insurance industry, our business runs when your providers are seeing patients, right? We get claims, we see how members coming in. So there was a stagnation for a three to four month period. And then there was a slow pickup. Uh, but I think the residual impact that I saw and heard from dentists when I talked to them was the staffing. Yes. Because when they shut down, the staff all went home, but a lot of the dentists were unable to actually pay their staff because you're not pre prepared for such, you know, oh. eventual une unexpected changes. So um, a lot of dentists, a dental hygienist, dental assistants chose alternate career paths. Well, they were, and, some, of them, some of them were actually afraid to come back into the offices too. I mean, that correct. wasn't just economics. It was like, oh my, you know, I have yes. little children at home. I don't want to bring it home. I mean, we yeah. heard that all the time. It was frightening, absolutely frightening. Yes. yes. So there was economics. There was personal fear of what, what would happen. Um, a personal protective equipment and the shortage of that all impacted. But what we as an industry have never been prepared for, which we, you know, I think the plans now are different. We were never, we had a two to three year like, uh, you know, time frame where you could say, oh, hygiene, you know, number of hygienists are going down. You would start recruiting, building your, you know, um, 
enrollment and you would have hygienists, it would pick up, right? There was always a plan in place. This was a sudden like downhill and next thing you know, you have no staff. And it's a residual saw, still. To this day, it's still residual. And, and it's residual. The second part is leaving chairs empty, right? Um, to not, till now, um, and I've seen this in my family, um, it, if you have COVID, you can test, you know, you could confirm your appointment the morning before, the night you will have COVID, you'll test positive, and then you call in the night and leave a message saying, I'm not coming in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So chairs being empty with very short notice, that is still a residual impact that we're seeing. So what I'm hearing from dental offices is you need to have a bigger patient population as a base of your practice to accommodate for those last minute calls which say, can you come in? And that has shifted a little bit in the industry is what I'm hearing from colleagues, peers, you know, I need to have more patients in my practice um, because I have more last minute cancellations. So, so thinking, <clears throat> I'm thinking on your chair right now. So the, the various insurance companies have um, network participation and things like that. And some of the dentists roll their eyes again on that, but that's a perfect answer, isn't it? Yes, yes, that is a perfect answer. Uh, the other part is um, I, I shift from the dental office to the patient. Uh, you call them patients. We call them our members because they are our clients. Um, they're your patients. But it's one and the same thing, right? Um, but for us, what we are seeing, this economy where this inflation is so high and we are still seeing that as an impact, um, members, patients are making financial decisions when they go see a dentist. Um, going out of network in the past, they might have said, I really like this dentist, so I will go out of network to see this dentist. But now if there's a cost to the pocketbook, they're going, you know what? I'm gonna go to see the dentist who's in my network. And, and I can validate that because as a pri I'm in private practice and just, it was probably two weeks ago, this patient called and his front crown fell off. And I thought, that's funny. I haven't seen this guy in about four years. And I thought it was COVID. And he said, no, no, my insurance changed and you weren't in our network. And But now yes. I have new insurance. I can come back and see you. They do my front crown. I was like, wow. And I thought, they love me. They'll never leave me. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it, we all make, uh, I mean, uh, you, me, and everybody else makes financial decisions for our families. And find part of that decision-making process is, okay, do I have more benefits if I go to in-network providers? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. The other uh, thing that members have started, you know, um, we have seen a very savvy consumer now, right? Um, so they're starting to ask us the questions. How do I know your providers in network? They know that we check our credentialing, make sure that the providers in our network, we give them some level of confidence that we have checked those providers. They are licensed, they have a valid license, they have a valid you know, professional liability insurance. So they know that we're doing the due diligence when they don't have time to do that due diligence. So yeah, they're becoming a little bit con savvy consumer. Yeah, Yelp and Google doesn't do that. <laughs> no, Yelp and doesn't, you know, and um, in uh, nobody likes to put good reviews on Yelp is what I've discovered. Bad reviews, I mean, not nobody. Uh, the fewer reviews are good. So the, if it's a bad review, you want to say something. Well, right? I think but let's, I'll take a little side tangent real quickly on that because a lot of dentists are using social media to, to improve their practice. So how many patients come to you, came to you when you were in practice or come to me and they go, oh, Dr. Paul, you're the best. I say, do me a favor. <laughs> Tell everybody else about this. Go online. I'm not, you're not allowed to solicit. I mean, there's, there's rules and regulations about Yes, you. exactly. But, but that's not solicitation. I'm just saying, do me a favor. And, and the, the, the fight, the best way you can get rid of a poor uh, rating, a one-star rating is to have 100 five-star ratings. 
That's Correct. all. You, you don't respond to them. You don't answer them. It's a whole other. We can have a two-hour discussion on that. But that. But it's interesting you mentioned that too. Yeah, and and in that same light where you said you can't solicit patients, right? So now, if you need more patients, if yeah. you're in a network, they they provide you that patient base that you are looking to build your practice. Um, so there's a lot of advantages, and you know, for us as part of the industry, the uh, payer industry. For us, it's a partnership. Yeah. We want, we want providers in our network because we want our members to have access to care. The more access to care they have, the better their oral health and therefore their overall health. So it's like oh. this big circle and it's a partnership. And, 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 and the people who are in the network know that they're allowed to come to the dentist X number of times and say, Correct. we'll come to your practice. And in the big picture, it actually saves yeah. the patient money because they're doing the preventive work they're supposed to do in the first place. So Correct. again, that this is why people, I say to people, the insurance company is the best thing you've ever had because, it, you know, why are they coming all this time? Because they get, they can, because the, 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 the policy allows things like that. And people sort of Put that aside because there's the you know this 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 specter of the insurance industry and they're so wrong they're so wrong <laughs> yes and, and trust me um my kids are even not scared of me so i'm not a scary person and i'm <laughs> i'm here to be part of this partnership that allows you to have a relationship with somebody on the dental payer industry and for you to understand why we do sometimes what we do, because there's rules and regulations on our side as well. Sure, sure. But, but you know, in addition to helping the patients, you, you I'll say you collectively, you, you at Unum, you the insurance industry, can help us in our practices because there's a certain amount of administration that you can help us with, especially if you're in network, there's some little tricks that you can do to have the insurance company help us find out certain things about benefits and and, and so explain a little bit about that. <laughs> so uh, one of the things uh, that um, part of my role and a part of my career, I love to educate. And when I say educate, I look at ways to educate our internal team members on dentistry. Uh, I have courses that I've set up for Dentistry 101, 102, telling, uh, teaching them, educating them and having them be savvy enough and educated enough to get a phone call from a provider and able to answer that question. So they go through rigorous training at UNM so that we can educate them and get them ready for the questions from the provider side. Um, another thing, and this is, this is the, again, the impact of the pandemic. What we've seen is the turnover of staff in the front office has been tremendous. Oh, yeah. Because there's, there's constant turnover. So if you have constant turnover, who is going to spend the time to educate that new person in the dental office? Well, guess what? We're doing that. We're getting uh, dental offices call our provider relations team and they're new, they don't know how to build, and our team walks them through. So you've got like an extension of your office within UNAM that helps you process your clients. So you're an advocate to it, you're our advocate. Yes, and we actually, we don't even call them our provider relations team, we call them our provider advocates. They oh, are, really? our, oh. <laughs> they are, they are advocates. They, and um, it, it is, interesting sometimes they will advocate to me more like no we've got to do this Dr. Nina. and I'm like I know <laughs> they're, they're like because they build relationships with these provider offices because they call them all the time they talk to them so they are more interested in helping that office as the as a partnership it's crazy so, so oh okay, I'm sorry go ahead <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the one thing that uh, the other thing is, you know, we um, we have technology that allows our providers to do online claim submission for faster claims processing. Um, and I never say fa faster claims payment. I say faster claims processing. 
because again, it's a partnership. Sure. I can process your claims fast, but if you want your check in the mail, you will have to go with the United States Postal Service, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want electronic funds transfer or a quick pay, um, you can always contact a provider relations team and they will help you get set up so you can have direct payment as like an electronic funds transfer. Now that's, that's again, a partnership. You want to get paid fast, then you have to work with us. We'll process your claims fast, but we can't help you get paid fast if you don't do your little part in getting that set up. But that's, that's all about modern technology. So, so. Correct. <laughs> So, so I'm looking to Unum or to, to say, you know, well, why would I, why would I choose Unum? And what, what qualities do you have offered to me as the practitioner? So I would say, well, that's a good, you know, let, let's go into this network. This is a good network. Yes. Um, I, again, I've talked about our provider advocates working sure. with our provider teams, how well they are trained and how well they are able to support our provider network. So all of that, the, the, yeah, the other thing is just the awareness about oral health and overall health. We train our provider advocates and our, uh, you know, our customer support team, anybody who answers phones, who deals with providers, we train them to understand how important their role is as part of a member's oral health. Like they supporting the provider in improving a member's oral health helps that member's overall health. So I do a, as part of my Dentistry 101, I actually do a oral health, overall health training for them. So we do a deep dive into that. So they, they feel that absolute commitment towards that awareness and then the technology, you know, our claims processing system. Um, we also are very dedicated to making sure that we have modern tools, uh, in our claims processing system to stay competitive in the marketplace um, and making sure that our claims process fast. So all of that makes it a partnership where we're, we are as successful as our providers. So if our providers are successful, we are successful. And it's not, we're not successful if our providers are not successful. And if anybody tells you a payer plan is successful when our providers are not, that's not possible. It is a partnership. You, you actually, I, I just remembered something you said to me the other day. You said, I don't get paid to deny claims. I get paid to process them properly. And it's yes. a big, that's a big statement. <laughs> yes, it, it is. I, I really, we look at um, industry standards, um, you know, uh, looking at uh, industry standards, looking at making sure that we are looking at standard of care, making sure that we process the claims per the industry standard in the standard of care. So we're not denying it. There's, there's nothing with this. We, have, we are answerable to somebody. Sure. And at the end of the day, if a claims process wrong, I, I have to look a provider in the face and tell him why it was processed wrong. And it's contractual. Me, that's not a I mean, fun conversation. Oh, I know, but there's, I mean, everybody has to understand there's contractual issues and, and different Correct. plans and different policies. I mean, that's, that, it's just hard to explain this to the patients, and you shouldn't even get into that discussion, to be honest with you. Correct. Um, and, and, you know, um, there's. You, I mean, us. <laughs> yes. The, the other thing is, we've all been um, in practice uh, long enough. I've, I've been in the industry 30 years now, in the dental industry, excluding insurance pay sure, providers. Sure, sure. As I, at the end of the day, I'm primarily a dentist at first, and then everything else falls, right? And we've all seen work from our peers where we would go, wow, that's amazing work. And then we've seen work which says, who did that? Yeah. That doesn't mean um we're wrong in assessing that we're just doing our jobs so same way we see that in the in industry all over and that's not just dentistry you see it in medicine you see it in pharmacy you you're seeing it everywhere where you question some decisions and some processes 
And that's the same with us. We're no different than how other industries are. Um, but but one, of the th one of the things that I think Unum is very, very lucky to have you is yeah. you're the patient's advocate and you're interested not so much in the claims, you're interested in the patient's oral health. And I think that you, you show that very clearly. <laughs> yeah, and um, I think that uh, another thing that I feel, um, you know, in this days where there's so, so limited time for a dentist in his practice, right? They're going through it fast. They don't have time to set up their website with oral health literature that a member can access. We do that for you. Oh. We have a library of oral health articles that the members can go to. You don't have to be the source for oral health education if they want to read more. They don't have to take your time in the chair. Uh, the other thing is, how do they have time in the chair to ask you questions? They have gauze, a handpiece, <laughs> something in their mouth. So, so it is really- They try, outside. they try. <laughs> <laughs> they try. And, and so it is outside of that chair time. So then you are looking at, uh, you know, provide a care, providing care to another patient. So therefore, we feel it's important for us to support you by having that literature available for our members. That's that's a great that's a great benefit, added benefit added value I suppose. Mm -hmm. So I guess just backing up a little bit, I mean, so you you yourself chose Unum. You you said you were at Delta at different places. So so what was your fascination? I'm just curious. <laughs> um, so I've I've been in the industry 20 years. Um, I had met people at Unum. Um, and I would talk to them, they're friends of mine, peers of mine, and I would talk to them. And there was a contentment of the culture at Unum and the, how they were thriving and what they felt uh, about Unum and their incredible experiences. You know, I would hear about it. Wow. Um, and so when there was, uh, an opportunity, a peer of mine said, hey, why don't you join our team? And it was very exciting. So um, as part of, you know, the recruiting process, you always have all the nice, wonderful sure. things that happen as part of recruiting. Um, and all that happened to me as well. I think, I think Unum is very lucky to have you. I'm being honest because- Oh, I've thank you. Many people, well, I've spoken to a lot of people over, over my years as a practitioner from the practitioner side and also from what I do in the industry. And I just, you, you just exude such a great passion for this. And, and I, 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 I believe that you're doing exactly what you're telling us is that that's just you. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I have two young kids. And when I say young, young, young women, um, Thank you. <laughs> and let me tell you, they hold you accountable. So you can't you can't say one thing and do one thing, and that is really what actually brought me to Unum. You know, what you see is what you get. Yeah, that's that's me inherently. That's the culture at Unum. Uh, I've been with the company now a few months, uh, and the roast rosy glasses have not come off <laughs> that they're, they're, they're permanent and they, I work with different and it's not just me I hear our customer service agents and they're happy every day to be at you uh, I see my peers uh, they're all just everybody is happy uh, you know uh, there was a there's a small example I'll give you I was talking to a peer of mine today and they're, they're putting in, implementing some project and she was telling me that her team um, is working extra hours and she needs to figure out how to manage that so they're not working. Nice. And I was thinking to myself, having been in the industry 20 years, I've been through a lot of projects and I don't remember where somebody was actively looking to see how to manage my home life balance right more by work life balance and that i was that's that is you know culture that's great. And, and and so 
what you will see is because of that, what we strive to do is have that same experience for our customers. You will get what you see is what you get. You'll have that wonderful experience. And I've talked to a lot of our provider advocates and the personality that I, you say that you're seeing is kind of what I hear from them. It's kind of wonderful to see. Well, I think, I think we've, we've, we've gotten some new fans here. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you. I, and, and so I, I guess we have to wrap up a little bit. And, and just so because this is such an exciting company to work for and work with as, as practitioners, I, uh, we, there must be a way, I assume there's a website that you said some of these information pieces are on. I, what would that be? Yes. A, a union. Yes. Um, we, uh, you can go to unum.com um, and that is our website. You can go there and uh, there's a provider tab. You can go dental and vision and look uh, for provider and see how to join the network. Uh, and then, you know, uh, if you're interested, there's phone numbers there. You can contact them or the, and request for a provider callback. A lot of times a provider advocates will work with the provider and actually say, when is the dentist available? We'll call you. So they work around that schedule. Um, so yeah, so you can go to unum.com. Well, I think and, we'll post that. We'll, when we post this video, we'll post that somewhere either on the screen here or right below it, all the information. Cause this is- uh, Perfect. This has been, this has been enlightening and, and, and friendly and happy. And it's about insurance companies. So how much better does it get than that? <laughs> At the end of the day, you have to realize I'm also a consumer. Yes, so yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I have to deal with insurance company for my personal health. So how can I make that a difficult process? Because if I did that as a difficult process, then I wouldn't be fair to even myself. True. That's true. This Dina. So, this has just been great. This has just been wonderful. And, uh, and thanks so much for spending some time with me. And um, let's just say I'll, I'll talk to you soon again. Yes, thank you very much. Have a right, great thanks. rest of the thanks. day. Thanks a lot, I will. All right, bye.